Do we have any public comments? Yeah, sure. I think we're going to have to go to the council. Oh, we started early. Well, one minute early. Okay. Well, <laughs> we'll give it a second. Okay. Sorry. We normally do not start early. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, we are currently having public comments. So if you do have a public comment, please feel free to type that into the chat box. No okay, then we will move on to presentations. All right, thank you. We have a few presentations this evening. I'm going to start out with Mr. Hanson giving an <coughs> overview of technology, his department, and um, the progress that happened since he's here. And just to um, let everybody know, we are changing the format a little bit, um, presenting our slides in English, as well as then the next slide in Spanish, which is Mr. Herrera, um, who is virtually going to be translating. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, today, I want to discuss a little bit about the year at a glance from uh, essentially from March 2020 through right now is 2021, um, focusing on technology services and um, accomplishing goals of keeping support for our families and stakeholders, as well, including our students and our staff as well. Uh, buenas tardes a todos. Este va a ser una actualización de servicios de tecnología um, y son actualizaciones que han pasado desde marzo 2020 hasta actualmente que han impactado a nuestros estudiantes y, y a nuestras familias. So when I, I'd like to start off today uh, talking about maintaining our foundation. Anytime I talk about technology services, I want to always talk about how we lay a foundation to continue not only support of all of our staff, but also internally as well. So it all starts off with our department. Our department, even though it's relatively small, it's very strong, it's team centric, it's supportive, it's flexible. Especially during this time, which this time is, no, even though it's been much busier than you typically would expect over the course of a school year, um, I would say that any year would be just, just as supportive, as reliable, and as knowledgeable. So as a department, we're always team centric, working together, uh, solving any sort of problems or challenges that are happening or uh, that could occur in technology. It, everything on top of that regards to uh, planning, a strong infrastructure, technology, compute, uh, communications are very important uh, on a year-to-year -year basis for school, for our school. 
Um, also, when we, every year, we continue to obsolescence plan to a long range plan. Our planning is not just yearly, it's projecting multi years in advance, focusing on technology services, hardware, and software. And I'm very proud of what we have accomplished over the course of several years because it allowed us to be able to have enough devices for all of our students, to have strong infrastructure, strong, reliable infrastructure, not only for, um, for our students here, but also staff as well. We started from over the course of the pandemic, especially having no one here, to having staff here, to having students here, to having students and simultaneously students at home. I'm proud to say that uh, even though that a lot of that can't be predicted outwards, we planned out accordingly and laid that foundation. And through all of this, we incorporated technology communications for our staff, for our students to make sure that we have uh, an understanding and we have protocols that are available for everybody. Aquí puede ver las, um, de nuevo, eso es el man, cómo estamos manteniendo nuestra fundación del Departamento de Tecnología Instruccional. Lo que acaba de hablar el señor Hansen es um, que nos enfocamos mucho en apoyar a nuestro personal. Um, el equipo de tecnología instruccional es pequeño, pero se quedan ocupados apoyando al personal y a los estudiantes también. Y se centra mucho en, ese, en la fuerza de, de trabajar en equipos. Aquí puede ver este... Um, Cómo hemos cambiado de, en todo el año de tener a nuestros estudiantes todo a, de aprendizaje a distancia um, y luego teniendo unos de nuestros estudiantes dentro de nuestros edificios también. Aquí puede ver la, um, unos detalles sobre la planificación de obsolencia, las um, proyecciones anuales sobre servicios tecno, tecnológicos, el hardware, el software y el apoyo es algo que se centra mucho. La, um, tener una fu fuerte infra infraestructura um, y mantener eso y un apoyo de red redes fuertes para adaptar en situaciones que son predictibles o impredictibles. Um, y también nos, um, nos enforzamos en las comunicaciones de tecnología, que sean transparentes, consistentes, regulares, específicos y basados en datos um, y predecibles. De nuevo, el departamento um, se esfuerza también de, estar, de ser apoyable, flexible, confiable, informado, informado y centrado en el equipo. Thank you. One thing I want to establish is that within an unpredictable, uh, an unprecedented time, I'd like to take it as this opportunity to share the teamwork that was involved, not only from the technology department, not only from our instructional technology committee, who's been uh, very uh, like, amazing this year when it comes to planning and seeking out feedback not only from our staff and, and students, but also our teachers and staff and our parents and students as well. And our technology coach, I don't want to uh, not uh, honor him and share this information. Everybody's pro provided, uh, has persevered over this course of this year. Everybody's learned from each other. They learned from not only this new technology that we didn't expect uh, to be utilizing on a regular basis, that your really young children to eighth grade to our, our video conferencing on the reg regularly, and we're learning all new terms throughout that process. So I want to take this time to just to recognize everybody for their teamwork because everybody's helping each other out there, learning and persevering. If you say last year at this time or prior to March, I would say, uh, I mean, I know that we wouldn't want to continue being in a pandemic. We want to move forward and being out of it. But I would say that everybody has grown, um, whether you're a student or a staff, or parent, everybody's grown and learned a lot of technology skills throughout this process. And that's something that's going to strengthen everybody um, as we move forward. Aquí puede ver um, sobre el, perdón, aquí puede ver el trabajo en equipo de, sobre el distrito de que tenemos en nuestro distrito um, de parte del Departamento de Tecnología. Quiere dar muchas gracias también al instructor de tecnología educativa, tam, pero también a nuestros, a, a todo el personal, a los estudiantes y a los padres, um, porque en un tiempo, tiempo que es in, impredictible, um, de nuevo queremos darles gracias porque todos estamos aprendiendo, todos estamos creciendo habilidades de, de tecnología que nunca hemos pensado que íbamos a tener que experimentar. Um, también tenemos la Comité de Tecnología, de tecnología Educativa, los maestros y el personal, todos han crecido, crecido también um, los padres y estudiantes. Over the course of this year, I had a few goals. One of the goals is essentially is, uh, enhancing and expanding our support for our District 76 families regarding use of technology and distance education learning and facilitating from home. 
So throughout that process, we've added a, a lot of resources this year. One, an additional help desk. Typically in a, in a technology environment for a school system, we have a help desk for all of our staff and, and that continues to um, always, be, always be implemented. However, we wanted to make sure our, our families are supported throughout this process. So we had the student help desk. The student help desk will continue throughout the school year and throughout the time where students are at home. So our families and students are supported. Also to be able to continue making sure that the devices, if they have any issues, get resolved and have that connection for home. So as I mentioned, the student help, help desk made, uh, continues to provide in-person as well as remote family support. Prior to, even though we have a lot of resources on our website, it's also important to, we added this, our Parent Technology Center, a one-stop dashboard that has resources for our families that's ongoing. It's not something that is just, uh, we add resources and it stays still. We continually add resources that are important for our families, whether it's from new resources like such as Seesaw or Google Classroom or Google Meet, how to use those resources for our families, how to use, even for our students and uh, staff as well. Additionally, we added virtual parent technology learning nights heavily at the beginning of the school year because as we, uh, in an unpredictable summer moving into the course of the year, we wanted to make sure that all of everybody's supported when it comes to technology. Everybody's a professional with technology because everybody's been using it quite often, but prior to that, we wanted to make sure that we sought out feedback from our families. We provided resources uh, um, every roughly twice a month and also Q and A because you could be presented at, but also the opportunity to have a forum to ask questions, to provide answers is there. And that information is on our Parent Technology Center. Uh, last summer, we, we had to incorporate, um, we, had, we had a board meeting, we shared about how many families have internet access for their students. We're for, when it came to the, uh, uh, the long range planning, we incorporate that information in our registration process for reasons so that we can learn from our families yearly. Every time around spring is when we provide registration that takes some time to get that information in. However, when we get that information and we get the realistic data on what families provide, sharing what internet is available for student use at home. So we're able to provide internet hotspots for families. We continue to do that throughout this process so our families that are electing to stay at home, working from home, are connected uh, through communication. And throughout this process, how dynamic it is. We continue to update our guidelines and protocols, not only for our families, but also for our staff as well, because we switch from remote to in-person to hybrid. Uh, in-person is pretty much back at this point as well. Uh, so we want to make sure everybody has the right information in the same spot. Ahora vamos a ver um, este uno de los um, de los métodos de, de la, del Departamento de Tecnología era mejorar y expandir el apoyo de tecnología instruccional para familias. De nuevo, esto es un resumen de lo que acaba de hablar el señor Hansen, pero voy a tocar en, y me voy a enfocar en los, um, en los temas uh, más importantes de, de sobre lo que habló. De nuevo, siempre estamos disponibles si tienen preguntas o comentarios, pero unas cosas que había mencionado, de nuevo, las metas era para um, seguir a y aumentando los recursos que, tenía, que tenemos disponibles en el distrito. Tenemos el servicio de asistencia adicional um, para los estudiantes en donde ellos pueden mandar un correo electrónico si tienen problemas con la tecnología en casa, sus dispositivos. Y eso um, a, ayuda con el apoyo en persona y virtual para los estudiantes y a las familias. Um, uh, y luego dio ejemplos de ese apoyo dependiendo en en qué edificio están los estudiantes, era apoyo en CISA, en Google Classroom o en Google Meet, que es la videoconferencia. Um, otras cosas, este, teníamos los recursos en línea um, para, para los padres que se centran en tecnología para los padres. Um, también teníamos disponibles noches virtuales de aprendizajes de tecnología con um, sesión de preguntas y respuestas donde los padres podían uh, comunicarse um, individualmente con con la, el Departamento de, te, de, de Tecnología. Um, también nuestros esfuerzos es de prestar en, um, los hotspots que son puntos de acceso de internet para nuestros estudiantes. Y siempre estamos mirando las reglas y protocolos, um, los estamos actualizando para adaptarse a la pandemia y a otras situaciones que podemos ver. And like I said, there were, I had a few goals. The second goal is essentially enhancing enhancing and expanding our, our staff regarding the use of technology throughout the distance, hybrid, in-person education and teaching. 
So throughout that, just like our, our, our families, we incorporated staff instructional technology needs assessment. This is a collaboration effort to be able to look at this information and move forward with professional development that's available for staff, whether it's asynchronous or synchronous. Because keep in mind throughout the school year, we had staff at home teaching from home. We had staff teaching from school as well. So we had to accommodate all modalities of learning. And, and throughout the process of the course of the year, our instructional technology committee was also a part of that by looking at that information and starting to develop professional development needs, not only for themselves, not only for themselves as a, com a, com a committee, but for, their, for all their counterparts as well. I, as I mentioned, we, the onboarding of instructional technology coaching has been beneficial. We've, that's been communicated in previous uh, presentations as well. Having that coaching model has also been very effective when it, came, when it comes to providing the support. Our technology uh, staff as well, so our technology department continues to provide that tactical support ongoing throughout, throughout the process. And then as we lean into hybrid and in-person and simultaneous learning that we've been utilizing at District 76, we've added additional technology resources to support that. We provide, we not only saw feedback for what to learn, but what are we gonna need to continue learning? So teacher headsets, additional monitors, um, updating or interactive panels in classrooms to accommodate the, the teacher and all the different methodologies of teaching. And I, I, even though it's at the end, Google Voice, when our, when our uh, teachers are at home, whether they're stay at home or they're teaching from home, we provide Google Voice as a way for our teachers to feel confident and comfortable to communicate from home via phone instead of using their personal devices, we assign a Google number for them to utilize throughout this time. Y ahora para mejorar y expandir el apoyo de tecnología instruccional para el personal, um, la, el departamento dio una evaluación de necesidades de tecnología de instrucción para el personal. Imple, um, implementamos aplicaciones empresariales, empresar, empresales, perdón, um, también proveemos entrenamiento de tecnología instruccional y esto ayuda para el personal que quien se encontraba um, dando clases de su, de su casa o en persona. Um, teníamos diferentes acomodaciones, acomodaciones para diferentes plataformas de aprendizaje. También este, tecnología, teníamos de parte de la tecnología en nuestras clases um, que hemos actualizado son los um, panel, paneles interactivos um, y luego más apoyo adicional para nuestros para el personal de nuestro distrito teníamos audífonos para los maestros um, monitores adicionales y servicios de Google Voice y de teléfono para que no tengan que usar su um, teléfono personal. Next steps and updates. As we conclude the 2021 year, we're going to get technology and services is always going to continue now only supporting our, our students that are remote or our students and, and staff that are in person as well. So business as usual, as usual, everything is going to, whether it's incorporating all the enterprise resources that we've onboarded, that's going to continue throughout the school year. And the same uh, protocols and communications will continue happening. Um, if any changes are happening, we want to make sure that transparency is there for everybody. Additionally, professional development will always be available through our technology, not only through our technology services, our technology coach, and as we lead into the school year, as always, there is a summer technology, I'm sorry, summer professional learning institute. So there's always continued learning opportunity for our staff. And as we lead into the upcoming school year, of course, we'll uh, see seeing how we can predict outwards, resources and, and professional development for our families. Um, even though we can, we talked about year to glance of 2021, I want to share a little bit about updates as we lead into the next school year. Um, as you mentioned a few, a few board meetings ago, we approved uh, our lease for our new Chromebooks. So uh, over the course of the end of the summer, we'll be turning over all of our previous Chromebooks with our new Chromebooks to have a reliable resource for the next three years for our first through eighth grade. Uh, we're onboarding, and this is, this is not just technology, this is district wide for here. EduClimber, which is our data warehouse, in Alpine, we're transitioning to Al EduClimber, which is a lot more uh, approachable resource for our staff to be able to look at data and to be able to use that data for uh, student achievement. Um, the, the topic that you'll hear me say quite often, or at least the staff will, uh, is uh, SOPA. So ensuring that 
all of our student data privacy is, is compliance and having a resource and vetting all of our operators or vendors to ensure that they are following the appropriate um, guidance so that our student data privacy is, is in place. Um, as, as I mentioned in obsolescence planning, through year eight funding, we will be turning over our firewall. So our onboard cybersecurity appliance or firewall will be updated over the course here to make sure that not only our network is robust, but also secure as well, continue to be secure. And last but not least, whereas we turn over our, our, our update our technology services, we'll be updating our, our um, monitoring and ticketing systems as we move forward for our staff. Um, para nuestros próximos pasos y actualizaciones concluyendo el año escolar 2021, continuaremos apoyando la tecnología, los servicios, el apoyo y las plataformas de aprendizaje en persona. Continuaremos apoyando la tecnología, los servicios, el apoyo um, de aprendizaje remoto también y las oportunidades de desarrollo persona, um, profesional para nuestro personal. Um, y algunos proyectos del Distrito 76 también es el nuevo intercambio de dispositivos para los estudiantes. Um, como mencionamos en, en la previa reunión de nuestra mesa directiva, renovamos el contrato para nuevos Chromebooks para nos, nuestros estudiantes. Um, tenemos, vamos a tener la incorporación de, de EduClimber, que antes era Alpine, y esto era el lugar principal de datos actualizados para la, um, para la instrucción um, que um, en resumen es para el éxito de los estudiantes, para el dato del el éxito de los estudiantes. Continuaremos con la incorporación del cumplimiento de SOPA, que es la acta de conocimiento para estudiantes que da directrices um, de privacidad para los estudiantes. También, también tenemos actualización del hardware de ciber, ciber, ciberseguridad y actualización de los servicios tecnológicos, incluidos los sistemas um, de, de seguimiento y solicitud. I do not have a question slide, but at this time, I'd like to open up for any kind of questions or feedback beforehand. So, you know, I will always start. So, uh, especially when it comes to uh, networking. I certainly want to uh, recognize the effort that it takes to run, to establish a, 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 an environment, technology-based environment to be so reliable. And what you've done here, being able to um, really not only get teachers, the students, the families all on board, all trained, all supported to be able to use technology effectively. That's a huge endeavor. And then when you look at the other dimension of overall security, privacy that just it just gets magnified as we say you know at work if the network doesn't run you can't do your business and so uh, I have to recognize really this incredible effort that you've done um, I, I certainly want to ask if you can if you want to brag a little bit about how many help desk calls you've received on average and percent uh, result <laughs> all those little stats that really are helpful but you don't have to answer them if you don't have them uh, but certainly want to uh, commend to the the fact that you provided those um, um, training technology training nights uh, incredible. So thanks so much for that. I really appreciate that. Um, I do not have an executive report right now on the, on the tickets. It was we had to switch gears really quickly for our families and also use a communication tool like email and phone call to be able to um, make sure we support not going through a ticketing system. I know as a parent. I do something slightly different for my own children, but something like that, so just to make sure that's there. Um, it's definitely always ongoing, but that's that's as expected. Um, I don't remember the part two to that, no, but, uh, but no I really appreciate the the sentiment and notes there. It's been a busy year, but um, oh, I, I remember that the parent technology night. Yeah, that's something that that it was we didn't implement, but. With technology that we are all learning and utilizing with video conferencing, so that even families that are attending the board meeting, they have the ability to do so. Now they have the, they have the resources as well in the future. So we'll continue that just to accommodate everybody. Again, thanks so much. Absolutely. I just wanted to echo what Jose said, and I actually have the same question about the tickets. So I wondered if at the end of the year, if you can kind of just give us like a look back, yeah. just because I think it'll give us give the board as a whole an appreciation of how much extra time 
an effort was spent by the technology team and kind of the different questions people might have had and, and to get a, a better overall visual because obviously I think Jose said it really well, you know, if the network doesn't work, your business doesn't work. Well here the network went down, you know, the education wouldn't happen. So um, it was obviously a very critical part of distance learning. Um, and so to get more information on that just so I think we can appreciate all the work that was done sure. would be great. Yeah, I, I, I think I can I can put together some, some numbers for everybody. Thank <laughs> you. Sure. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Ms. Hansen. Thank you. All right. Our second presentation this evening is going to be Mr. Noel, who is going to give an overview of um, special education or special services from his um, department. And as we all know, um, his department was reorganized um, this year under Mr. Noel's leadership. So I thought it was a great opportunity for him to kind of share all the progress and accomplishments that have been made um, under his leadership. Thank you for that. Um, so I just want to start off by saying thank you to the board um, for approving the position and giving me the opportunity to, to step in and lead. And, and thanks to DLT as well as our staff. Um, they've been very welcoming. Uh, the transition to happen during remote learning and coming in and starting a new job is, was a little terrifying, but um, with all their support and their willingness to support students, it, I feel like it was a very smooth transition. So I just want to say thank you to all of you as well uh, prior to getting started. So uh, we're looking. Sorry. Um, thank you, Mr. Dole. Um, ahora vamos a empezar con la actualización del Departamento uh, de Servicios Espe Especiales de parte del señor Dole. Um, quiere dar la gracia a nuestra mesa directiva por la oportunidad de servir en esta posición y también darle gracias a todo nuestro personal um, por el trabajo y el apoyo que pudo brindar a nuestros estudiantes um, durante este tiempo. So just to kind of get started, I wanted to go back to where we were um, when things kind of started and, and just revisit the audit that was completed last year by Dr. Uh, Powell and just kind of highlight what she had brought to everyone's attention as kind of the areas of uh, uh, recommendation to focus on moving forward. And those were, as listed on the screen, programming and service delivery, uh, supporting students with behavioral needs, professional development needs, and communication. And as I started to dive into the role this summer, I had a chance to meet people. Um, I met with principals, some lead teachers, and we started to kind of dive a little bit deeper into those areas and understand what we could work on um, to start moving forward and really supporting the program. Um, and that's where the goals and priorities kind of evolved. Um, it really took shape focusing on that professional practice as well as operational excellence um, and the piece of communication that's kind of intertwined to all of that. En un resumen, um, empezamos el año escolar con las recomendaciones de la auditoría de la doctora Powell, que ayudó con el enfoque sobre de parte de este departamento y el trabajo que hicieron que hizo durante el año escolar. Um, nos enfocamos en la pro programación y prestación de servicios, el apoyo para los estudiantes con, con, los, con necesidades de comportamiento, um, necesidades de, de desarrollo profesional para nuestro personal. Um, profesional para nuestro personal y también la comunicación que son una de nuestras metas um, de parte del distrito. In the area of uh, professional excellence, we focus on kind of four main uh, um, avenues as we went forward this year. The first one being staff trainings. Uh, we did a lot of this in the, in the fall and, and winter. Um, so the first being focusing on IEP service delivery. So we started to, to dive into some of the data to see what, it, what um, minutes students were receiving what services, where those services were happening, and just having open conversations about what that looks like, uh, how we come to those decisions so that we can start to kind of think about, um, obviously, least restrictive environment, keep uh, having students have the inclusion opportunity, and just making sure that we are uh, providing the necessary services to support students going forward. We also talked about confidentiality, which is an extremely important thing in, in the world of special education, um, and how we support students with different behavioral needs. Um, the next piece was learning associate trainings and, and probably one of my favorite uh, things we did this year was really diving into giving those learning associates more resources and time to to grow professionally um, I've, I've worked with so many and and realized the the value that they truly bring so it was uh, exciting for me to be able to kind of give back to them and support them 
we focus on uh, just the basics of special ed, uh, how students become eligible, what the services can look like. We talked about the different disability categories the students are eligible under. We hit on confidentiality with them as well. Um, we talked behavior supports. We actually just met yesterday with them and talked about understanding autism um, and what that can look like in the school setting and how each student with autism is, is unique and how we program differently for them. And we'll meet one more time uh, by the end of the year here to just really start to dive in of where we've come this year and then how we can continue to support that group of professionals moving forward. Uh, the next piece was just connecting staff with professional development opportunities. Uh, I feel like it's something that's super valuable. So I'm sure you've all seen in some, in some of the sped updates that I do weekly. I try to connect and, and share any resources or opportunities that I know of or just encourage them to reach out if they have something they would like to participate in. Just a few things we hit on this year was board maker training, which is a communication slash visual picture uh, program to support students who are more visual learners. Uh, we, we did some SIPS training, which is an intervention program. We had our, a couple of social workers attend a Ross Green um, workshop, and then we, we did a, uh, had a couple of staff attend a supporting learners with autism, and we continue to, to encourage them um, moving forward to reach out for any of those opportunities. And the last piece, which is probably my favorite, we, we connected as related service teams, so we would get together about, I think, five or six times this year social workers all together and myself speech pass together and we just kind of talk and touch about um, their specific areas and there's some really cool share outs that we saw from staff members sharing how they're meeting student needs i remember one of our speech pathologists showed how she was using green screens um, when working with students and just how cool they're implementing or utilizing technology to uh, engage students so it's a fun piece to see them really um, in their world and how they're how they're meeting students Y puede ver, um, nos enfocamos en, la, en el tema de excelencia profesional. Son cuatro avenidas en cual nos enfocamos más. Aquí puede ver el entrenamiento del personal. Um, y de nuevo, esto es un resumen que acaba de hablar el señor Dole. Um, siempre estamos disponibles si tienen preguntas o comentarios. Um, pero las, de nuevo, las cuatro avenidas en cual nos enfocamos es el entrenamiento del personal. Habló sobre el, um, la prestación de servicios de IEP, que, son el, que es el plan de estudios individualizados para nuestros estudiantes. La confidencialidad, que es um, muy importante para nuestros distritos y apoyos de comportamiento para nuestros estudiantes. La segunda avenida que nos enfocamos es el entrenamiento de asistentes de los maestros que mencionó que son personal muy valuables para nuestro distrito. Um, los conceptos, esto incluye los conceptos básicos de la educación um, especial, categorías de desigualdad, de nuevo la confidencialidad es um, muy importante y los apoyos de comportamiento de, de nuevo. Um, tercer enfoque es oportunidades de desarrollo profesional. Um, aquí son unos um, ejemplos que, que dio um, el señor, el señor Joel, perdón. Um, y eso es todo para el apoyo de nuestros estudiantes con autismo. Y también tenemos reuniones de equipo re, relacionado a temas relevantes. Um, el señor Joel se esforzó mucho en, en sus comunicaciones semanales también para nuestras familias um, y el personal um, con apoyos y recursos fuera de la escuela que él conoce para comunicar con todos. I'm in the area of operational excellence. Uh, one of the first things we, we jumped into was, was taking our special education binder, which housed so many useful documents and resources for staff, and uh, took it from a paper hard copy form and, and put it online so that it was easier to access with, with staff being at home um, in different places. Just really want to focus on the ability to edit things easier to make sure that we're updating guidance. Um, and it was still available to download, print, whatever staff preferred, but it was easy, more easily accessed. And that was one of the first key things that we kind of tackled last um, August, I believe it was. Uh, the next piece that we really worked on uh, to describe the operational excellence was the IEP audit. I conducted, so I pulled an IEP from each grade level um, just as a glance at what our, uh, our staff was producing and what those all looked like, kind of went through it, did my own checks, and was able to provide them with some of the findings that I had to continue to work on um, the IEP development and make sure that we are not only legally compliant, but we're providing useful information that um, is, is going with the students and it's a meaningful plan, plan to support their learning. Uh, the next piece was just my, my monthly one-on-ones uh, with principals and the Spedley teachers. I think this was one of the first things I got set up, was just the chance to talk with principals individually, as well as their lead teachers individually, on a monthly basis so that we could connect. Uh, we could talk about building specific needs um, and just make sure that we are addressing what was happening in each individual building. 
And then the last piece was just all the different guidances we try to provide throughout the year. I think one of the biggest things that happened early on was the remote learning plans and what does it look like for students who are who receive special ed services but now are at home and, and where the IEP isn't in its written form doesn't necessarily uh, transfer over in a real smooth and, and easy way. So we worked on how we go about making sure that these are plans are developed, that parents are communicated with, um, understand what's gonna happen during remote learning. We, we did a lot of updating re regarding the new guidelines uh, for draft paperwork, the ISB is set out. Uh, we worked on Medicaid documentation so that we can make sure that we're documenting all services that are being provided and maximize that uh, potential refund that comes back to the school district. Taking notes in the IEP meetings, uh, some that came out of the audit, and then just some interpreter changes that popped up in the last uh, couple of months here. Those are just a couple of the things we worked on to provide guidance. It was it was kind of never ending, but uh, some of those, those are some of the bigger pieces that came out throughout the year. Sobre el tema de excelencia operativa, tenemos la carpeta del de, de, Departamento de Educación Especial. Um, te, lo tenemos en formato en línea que está disponible para, nuestro, um, para los padres. Um, y eso ayuda con la facilidad de acceso. Ten, um, de parte de la auditoria del, del plan de estudios individualizados, nos, um, nos dio la oportunidad de, de la revisión de los IEPs um, que pasó en diciembre y los hallazgos fueron compartidos con el equipo de liderazgo del distrito y los equipos de educación especial por edificio. También el señor Dole um, tenía sus uh, mensuales reuniones con los directores y los maestros principales del departamento de educación especial y eso daba la oportunidad de conectar con cada, um, cada de estas personas por cada edificio escolar um, y de parte de la orientación este, también nos enfocamos en los planes de aprendizaje a distancia, actualizaciones de documentos pre provisionales, um, documentación de Medicaid y las guías de tomar notas durante los IEPs, las reuniones de IEPs um, y el cambio de los intérpretes. And then uh, communication was another big piece. That was something that I really took on this year. Just to make sure that all of our teams were, were being communicated with clearly, they understood kind of what was going on. And, um, felt like they had somebody that they could go to as well um, in, in addition to their building principles. One of, one of the things we, we did about, I think it was October, we started implementing some study weekly updates. Just for, give me an opportunity to update anything that was important that was happening, um, reiterate some of the things we had talked about, and, and just builds consistency in that communication. Um, it served as a bridge from my role to, the, to those who are um, in each of the buildings servicing the students with special needs. Um, the next piece was part, participating in the weekly team meetings. You know, I tried as often as I could to be at each building, um, special education meeting each week, um, whenever my schedule allowed, that just allowed me to be able to answer any questions student, uh, staff had, um, as well as stay informed with some of the things that they were experiencing. Um, the next piece was something that was super important to me was just the open, open door policy. The fact that staff knew they could reach out um, and that I was gonna be responsive and prompt and we we're gonna find an answer to whatever their question may be or, or uh, find resources to support what they were looking for. And then the last piece, which is, um, I think, a, ne a never ending topic, is, is supporting parents and community and making sure that they have information so that they understand the special education process, can advocate and support their students, um, just be really active participants in the, in the IEP meetings. And, and we started with the presentation back in the fall to kind of you know, really touch on the basic eligibilities of special education. Um, and we, we walked, went into adding um, a section recently in the Diamond Edge to provide some communication. That, that is pertinent to the special services area. And some of them will continue to work on it. Um, families, you know, they meet with teams on a regular basis for, for IEP meetings, just encouraging them to participate, ask questions, and really feel like they're an active part of that team. Ahora también de, de parte de la excelencia en comunicación, algunos de los esfuerzos de parte del señor Dolly, ese departamento, él comunicaba las actualizaciones semanales se, que se enfocaba en, las, en los temas importantes y eso también ayudaba a construir consistencia con, de parte de su departamento de la comunicación ahí. También um, participar en las reuniones del equipo semanalmente. Esto ayudaba a contestar preguntas que tenía el personal y mant mantenerse informados. El señor Dolly también 
también tenía póliza de puerta abierta, que esto ayuda también um, con, en pláticas en línea o, o en persona. Um, y eso ayuda también para la comunicación rápida y receptiva de parte del personal y las familias. Y el apoyo continuo de presentaciones de padres y sección en nuestro boletín del diamante, que es una comunicación mensual de parte del distrito. Before we kind of move forward to um, looking ahead to what's to come, I, I just wanted to highlight one of the surveys that we put out back in January um, just to all special ed staff. So that includes our, our teachers, our related service personnel, as well as um, our learning associates, just to kind of get, gauge their feedback on, on my role, um, how things are going, and see if there's anything that we can continue to do to support and, and, uh, and provide what is needed for them on a daily basis. Um, go ahead, Daisy. También teníamos una encuesta de satisfacción del personal de parte de este, um, del Departamento de Educación Especial y esto nos ayudó a agarrar comentarios y, um, de parte de nuestro personal para ver en qué temas nos podíamos mejorar uh, de parte de este departamento. So, uh, we had 41 total, total respondents and based on my count that is almost 100% participation from all the special ed related staff across the district. Um, the first series of questions related specifically to my role um, and basically asked the four um, main questions there was as a student service coordinator available, approachable, supportive, and responsive. Staff were asked to rate that on a one to five scale. Um, we had no rates lower than three, so that was really awesome to see. I felt like we were making some good progress. And a lot of um, in that rating said four to five, um, which really encouraged me. So I'm glad we were able to, that they felt that they'd come to me ask questions um, that was always available for them. Aquí puede ver las pre la pregunta de parte de esa encuesta es el coordinador de educación especial es y la escala es de calificación calificación de 1 a 5. Teníamos 41, 41 respuestas que um, es todo el personal de parte del Departamento de Educación Especial y aquí puede ver um, y esto es basado en si está disponible, si está accesible, comprensivo, comprensivo y receptivo. Um, so aquí puede ver los datos sobre la encuesta. Uh, the next series of questions related to their, their level of satisfaction with communication, um, opportunities for professional growth, collaboration within their SPED team, um, as well as the collaboration within their job specific team, and then the resources that they have available to meet uh, student needs. This time they're asked, it was one to five as well, very satisfied to not at all satisfied. And the majority of our respondents were in that very satisfied to satisfied range. Y de nuevo aquí también puede ver um, la pregunta de parte de la encuesta es por favor califique su nivel de satisfacción y eso es de parte del Departamento de Educación Especial um, y esto es basado de muy satis satisfecho o nada sat satisfecho y esto se basa en la comunicación si tienen la oportunidad de crecimiento pro um, profesional. Um, la col colaboración de le los equipos de educación especial, la colaboración de equipos re los relacionados con los trabajos y los recursos y o apoyos. And then lastly, they were asked uh, their overall level of satisfaction, satisfaction within their current role. Um, and again, we had majority of staff members were in the very satisfied and satisfied range. Aquí pueden ver que también tenía la oportunidad el personal de calificar su nivel general de satisfacción um, basado en muy satisfecho um, hasta nada satisfecho. So aquí puede ver los datos que es muy fuerte um, las respuestas de muy satisfecho. Um, I, I don't feel like uh, those are, are necessarily, necessarily telling us that everything is perfect in this in the special special services department but I do feel like it's a it's a good sign that shows um, the addition of this position has been very beneficial and, and people appreciate it to have somebody who is solely dedicated to that that area and able to support them I think shows that we're definitely moving in the right direction moving sorry I, I added a little bit there my bad uh, moving forward, I just want to uh, reiterate just maintaining and improving on uh, what we've been able to do this year, just continuing to, um, you know, support communication across all buildings, uh, make sure staff have what they need, and just building on, on everything that's been done. I feel like we've kind of all moved um, all the ships in the right direction to say, 
and then we're all kind of moving together as a collaborative force now for, for our special ed uh, students. And moving forward, what I really think is important um, as we kind of move out of the pandemic and, and look forward into the years to come is really diving into how we're programming for students uh, and delivering services, making sure that we have the adequate resources and tools available to support student needs. Um, and, and part of that goes with leveraging our finances to really support that, making sure that we are taking what we what we have coming in from, from grants and other in, income sources and, and spending it appropriately to address the needs that we're seeing. I and mean, just continuing that accountability rhythm that was established, those check-ins with principals and staff and um, IEP audits, and just things to make sure that we're all continuing to, to perform to the best of our abilities and, and supporting any uh, deficits or gaps that we may observe. Y ahora avanzando hacia adelante, um, el señor Do dice que no estamos diciendo que todo es perfecto de parte de este departamento, pero es, um, dio, quiere enfocarse en los beneficios de tener um, esta posición para apoyar a nuestros estudiantes um, personal y, no, y las familias. Um, queremos mantener y me, mejorar las, las metas y los éxitos. Um, los siguientes pasos sería para enfocarnos más en la programación y la prestación o cómo damos los servicios. Aprovecha, aprovechar de las finanzas para apoyar eficazmente a los estudiantes y continuar el ritmo de rendición um, de cuentas. And like Mr. Hansen, I uh, had a little oversight and did not put a question slide at the end here, um, but I will go ahead and allow I mean, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. I'd be happy to answer. <coughs> I have a couple of questions for you. So yeah. um, thanks for this uh, insight. It was very important to understand the work that was done, uh, where we are today, mm -hmm. and more importantly, too, that last slide of moving forward. Yes. Yeah. You know, so we know about uh, you know, your position and so forth. So uh, thanks for, for the overall effort. Mm -hmm. um, so the first question has to do with, um, as we, as you defined, um, the work that was was done here. Tell me a little bit about how that, if it has, if it has affected our relationship, our dependency on CEDAW, and, and how, how that that particular line uh, is affected now. Yeah, I, I think part of my role, and we didn't really hit on it in this um, presentation, was to build those relationships and get to know um, and support our students who are in those programs currently. I think moving forward as any district, it's really important that we build the capacity to support students. And I think as we as we talked and went through a lot of things this year, it was, we always try to keep in mind um, ways that we can build our, our own abilities to make sure that we can keep as many students in district as possible. There are some students based on needs that possibly will end up needing to be in a CEDAW program. And I think having that relationship between us and CEDAW uh, makes that a more, a better position, I guess. It allows us to work a little bit more closely at, I will say that in the last couple weeks, I've had lots of the CEDAW principals have given me calls. We've been we've been talking back and forth about our students and really support. So I think we've done a lot to build the, the direct connection with people over there. Um, so that in the cases that we have where we have students in programs um, that are run by CEDAW, we're we're able to best support them. So like I said, I, I think going forward as we as we build programming and resources and, and what we can do as a district, it's always important to see how we can try to keep students in house because there's benefit for them being in our district in our buildings with the peers that they are engaging with um, to the best extent possible. Okay, so if I hear you right, if, if we're redefining that relationship and really uh, enhancing what we have, what mm -hmm. we can offer here at our district. Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, you know, you, uh, the moving forward is very important. Is there anything else that you would want to recommend as far as points uh, for us to focus on beyond the goals and accomplishments to maintain or improve the work that you've done. In the other areas. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the biggest piece I think that's been most helpful is just the relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, that's been like, I think what has allowed us to really do the work that we've done this year. And, and some of that just comes from the availability that we talked about in the, in the, the survey and just knowing um, that there was somebody solely dedicated to those, that department that people could ask questions. Um, we all know that the principals are, have a lot on their plates and there, there's a lot going on and, and they're great resources too, but we collaborate a lot on how to support those students who are in the um, special education programs and, and receiving services. Uh, so I, I just think continuing to 
emphasize communication and availability of this position towards um, supporting staff is really important. Right? And, that, and that accountability rhythm, just having those regular check-in, regular meetings, being visible um, is something that is helpful. It helps you build relationships quicker. I think you touched on my last question, which is looking at the surveys. Um, it, it, we have good numbers, mm -hmm. great numbers, actually. Um, we, we always look at what, with such a small, I think you said 41 participants. Yes. Um, so, you know, the, the fact that you, I, I think in terms then of the lower tier, the yeah. folks that were not as satisfied, are you, what are you doing to address those particular uh, survey responses and uh, what can we do? Yeah, so it's just, that? a lot of it, so um, there was, since it is such a small survey, we, we did it anonymous, anonymously, you're able to kind of deduct a little bit where we did, we just separated by like, uh, job responsibility. So we were able to kind of see if it was uh, a related service person, a teacher, or a learning associate and, and know where we needed to address. I think a couple of them ended up being in, in the learning associate area and just knowing that um, while we've started to provide some training, there's still some more support needed um, and as we continue to plan. And that's part of why we brought back these um, little half-day trainings when they had, when we were early releases is to be able to give them more. Um, we've been responsible. We actually did another survey with them related to those trainings and what would be helpful. And we've been addressing one of them was autism and just how we support students around the spectrum. So we've tried to target and, and take that information. Um, and then otherwise, it's, it's just knowing that I think some of the practices we, we have in place are really great starts for communication, but uh, some of that availability and being in person and, and walking and being around classrooms it hasn't necessarily happened as much as it would have in a typical world. So I think as we move forward, it's really focusing on getting out and seeing programs in place, connecting with people on a more on an individual in-person basis as opposed to um, on the computers is, is something that's going to continue to help kind of support those bottom uh, two or three people that I guess we didn't see things as favorable. Okay, it's great that you were responsive to yeah. that particular community. Thanks yeah. so much. Mm -hmm. Um, did you have um, an opportunity to um, survey parents as well? We have not. Um, I do know that the state, and we had results that we got at the beginning of the year, works to communicate with families and provide a, sur uh, provide a survey that allows them to respond kind of about their experience that they have related to special education, which we uh, it just went out in March. And so we're going to be working on uh, communicating with families to encourage them to participate. Um, one thing that has been done in the past that we didn't do this year because of the virtual nature of most of our IEP meetings is that at the end of meetings, families would have the opportunity to participate in a kind of a survey to follow up on uh, how things were going. We had a, we had a difficult time of um, getting signatures along with something like that. We just didn't know how successful that would be during this remote setting at this point, but that's something that would, I would like to see reinstated next year as we start to bring families back in for IEP meetings. We were able to give them a device they could complete it before they even left. So we had a high return or you know high rate of return on those surveys and that gainful information. So between those two pieces, I feel like we'll be able to gather a little more information on how to connect with families. But that's going forward, that's definitely a, a key piece is how we support them and give them the knowledge to be able to be advocates and, and really support their and be uh, you know participate in IEP meetings and uh, support their students as needed. Slides touched on resources. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just wondered, have resources or additional resources been identified that are needed? And, and if so, have those been included in the budget for next year? Yeah, so we're we're still working on um, that. There's been some things that we've kind of developed and been able to purchase some smaller items throughout the year. Uh, I know there's an app that we we grabbed um, to support some of our students who are receiving occupational therapy services. Um, so some of those smaller purchases, we've been able to kind of look through and, and get in place sooner. I worked with um, one, of the, one of the pieces that the intermediate school was talking about, uh, FMP, and like some of the sources there. So Mr. Or Dr. Drock and I had touched base on, on getting additional resources for the special education staff at that building to, to implement. We talked about how can we bridge more continuity and programs that are being used with the like all the way up to the middle school. So, we started to have those conversations. I wouldn't say we're, we finished them by any means at this point, but there have been some certain little things that we've identified and, and put in place at this point. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a couple of questions. Um, do you 
have like a game plan to like be able to hand off? I know, um, yep. unfortunately, we're busy losing you. Yes. Um, do you have something where those little pieces are all put together and ready for the next? Yeah. So I have a, a folder in my Google Drive that is called the Special Services Coordinator Playbook that I am currently working on populating and will continue to work on. Um, I know part of this we move forward and we connect with the principals as well and, and just kind of recapping the year and how we can continue to, to support. So there's pieces like that I'm trying to resources, all my communications I've done this year, everything I've, I've got, I'm trying to put it in a place so that whoever comes in and, and takes the role is, understands where we've been and is able to take and, and put their spin on it and, and just continue to, to grow. So yes, that is, is on my to-do list and it'll be something I'll be actively working on going forward. That's great. And if I could add, um, and I think it was just prior to you coming on the board, but um, when we first started, um, I believe it was our second year, because one of our goals and priorities to have five departments um, and also five schools a year at glance. So each one of us has um, our own personal like year at glance, month by month, you know, important dates, important documents, important things that we do. So in addition to the special ed playbook, we also have department year at glance. And I know we are always been keeping track of, mm -hmm. you know, what are some other things that need to get done in the reports. Um, and then um, on our website, do we have um, a section devoted to special education? We do. Under the in the department, there's a special services, I believe is what it's titled. Oh, yeah. okay. But it's on there. And there's been a couple of little things that have been added um, throughout the year, that, uh, just some different resources, as well as uh, we have a, we updated our, our brochure for the special ed department and put it on there with the new logo and colors and everything. privilege and a pleasure to work alongside you as a member of this board. Your dedication to the students, staff, and community of District 76 are a model of service for all of us. You set high standards for yourself and by association for the board and for the district. I thank you for always bringing an invaluable voice to the table and exemplifying what it means to serve all of the stakeholders in our district community. Your voice thoughtful questions and sincere feedback will truly be missed. Jose, thank you for your exemplary dedication, consistent service, thoughtfulness, and leadership during your term. You stepped up to serve when you saw the need, and for that we are immensely grateful. Thank you for all your thoughtful questions, <laughs> uh, deep passion for children, and a servant leadership mentality that made you very uniquely exceptional asset to our board. Your absence will be felt immensely. Um, 
Um, Jose, I want you to know that your calm demeanor, thoughtful questions, and commitment to community have served as an incredible example of what a prepared and diligent board member should look like. I have really appreciated that and have looked at you as a role model. You are also a genuinely positive and present person, and I wish you all the best with your future adventures. Thank you, Jose, for your continued leadership and service to our district. You've constantly gone above and beyond to put our students first in all situations. I really appreciate your thoughtful questions and comments at all of our board meetings. Your insight and your perspective has continually added value to all of our discussions. I especially appreciate the time you dedicated to attending and representing our district at Seattle meetings and your care and concern for all of our special education students. You will be greatly missed. Thank you. On behalf of the District 76 Board of Education and District Leadership Team, I want to thank Jose for his service, support, and leadership to the district, its students, staff, and community. I first, I first met, no, excuse me, I first met Mr. Lozada four years ago when a fellow board member recommended him for the vacant position on the board based on his previous service. He had politely declined at that time due to his board commitments. And then two years later, I had the opportunity to contact Mr. Lozada again for another vacancy. He responded with a chuckle, I'm so glad you called me again. I thought I had lost the chance to work with you on the board since I had declined that time. And I told him not to worry, that I was pretty persistent and I don't take no for an answer. He laughed and then has been dedicated, loyal, conscientious member of our board for the past two years. He always asks thoughtful questions, provides amazing insights, and brings his vast experiences and our historical perspective from a culturally responsive lens. I appreciate his resourceful, fiscally responsible, future-focused, and student-centered voice in all of our discussions. Mr. Lozado, your passionate commitment, kindness, and heart will be greatly missed. Thank you for selflessly stepping up when we needed you. And on behalf of the board and the district leadership team, we want to present you with a few tokens of our appreciation. And there's a copy of the letter that we just read to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I was prepared for you guys just in case. <laughs> um, I, I certainly want to express my sincere thanks to all of you. Uh, and funny you should mention that, uh, Bob, that you're at the top of the list because you reached out to me and we had two conversations and yeah, you did call me back. So that, that was great. And I was, I'm so happy that I was able to help uh, fill that vacancy. Um, to this board, certainly thank you for welcoming me onto this team, this great team that we put together. Um, you each have personal strengths and professional skills that you bring to the table and uh, you, you know, you're actively ingrained in what we do and how we approach assessing what our administration, a great administrative team provides us. Uh, you guys make the job just as easy uh, for us to uh, assess and make decisions. Uh, it's clear to me that all of you are committed to providing all of our students the best possible public education our district can provide. Um, I know this board, uh, along with fantastic administration, um, will continue, and dedicated teachers, cannot forget the teachers, will continue to meet and exceed our educational achievements and goals. It has been my honor and privilege to have been part of this experience. Thank you so much. Open this now. Oh. <laughs> My wife had asked me about this. Are you going to get another plaque? <laughs> 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Okay. 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 Okay.
I think somebody gets that. Yes, I would echo that. Um, there was no greater sound in the world than Monday morning, the sound from the hallway of kids just talking and lockers closing and well, I'll say slamming, but that's okay. Usually that's a problem for me. But there was, it was just, it felt alive. There was a ton of energy in the building. Um, community went up to talk about that a little bit, I think, but uh, there was just energy in the building. And, you know, at the intermediate school, we're uh, at about 70% capacity and we've had, uh, we average about 96% attendance for our first semester. Yeah, recycling. The other, um, what was the prevalence? Dr. Fredericks have shared, same thing in the middle school energy was huge. It's always a win when middle schoolers show positive energy. Uh, so they were showing that, teachers were pumped. Uh, we, it's just great when students that are able to articulate how they just feel um, like they're able to re-engage teachers and do well in their studies again if they were struggling or just to see their peers and their teachers has been very exciting. Uh, we've got our, we have our track camp up and running this week, so that's been great as well to get that moving. And I know we closed the door, so it looks nice to board me, but we have an upstairs like bistro set up up there right now uh, to make we get all our students in here for the cafeteria. So we kind of have the little like, we call them like little like lovers tables around here, and <laughs> little chairs that are right on the edge. It gets nice view, um, but it's that's been a ton of fun. The kids have loved it. Uh, we're having an absolute blast in the school right now, and that's also Mr. Peterson is correct. He set up the bistro. It's Spring's Bistro up there. <laughs> Any questions from the board? Since you mentioned uh, attendance percentage, what were the other percentages you had? You know, I, uh, I don't um, know the exact numbers, but really high. We have not had many kids missing. In the yeah. 90s? Yeah, I would say in the 90s, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. and good. We had seen the 90s. We had a few middle schoolers that thought if they were tired, um, <laughs> maybe they wouldn't come, but we corrected that. So uh, <laughs> it was probably low 90s. I want to get closer to Kurtz. And our last update is about our This one I'll try to be really brief because it is uh, not very exciting, but it is a positive outcome. So I was contacted on February 2nd by Moody's and, and dropped a nice little surprise that they were releasing a new US K 12 grading methodology, which essentially just meant they're going to look at everything, for, you know, regardless of what you were previously rated. They would deduct points based on factors around each other. So, um, you know, for instance, we were assigned a double A2 credit rating, which is the third highest rating that Moody's offers uh, when we went out for a referendum month. So, I was ecstatic about that. And now, the, uh, the newest rating methodology had us dropping down two points because we are cash based with the county, which is a you know, perfectly acceptable form of accounting for school districts, but they wanted to stay cruel. Cool. So, uh, to no fault of our own, they want to knock us down two points for that, and then one point because the state made the pension to a pension cost shift, and they also want to knock us down a point because they're a tier two uh, district. So the socioeconomic uh, makeup of our district was being held against us. So you know, it, it just involved kind of uh, circling the wagons, and, and we had to do another presentation as far as what the district strengths are and what we see as you know future. Uh, you know, success and future barriers, things like that. So it's the same presentation that we did a few years ago with Moody's, and uh, you know, it was very well received. On April 5th, we, I gave the presentation, and uh, we still had a rating to drop from a double A2 to a double A3, but it was only a one point drop. So that was uh, the best case scenario for us. We still got marked down because the state made pension shifts and pension uh, cost shifts for us. So, uh, they took out all the other factors that they, they refer to as weak financial reporting, which is a cash base of the county, according to them. So uh, otherwise, uh, I stressed our strong reserves, our strong uh, conservative budgeting approach we do. And the fact is, uh, this isn't going to have a big outcome on, on anything that we do, because we're not planning on issuing any of these yet in the near future. We're thankful it's going to be done with some referendums and facility projects and it's going to launch. Uh, three or four years here. So um, just want to at least report that that uh, in the future, if we were to go out for some future construction bonds, we would heavily consider moving away from these and going to something like SMP or something like that. And that's what uh, the majority of districts in 
talk about them anymore. That they're they're kind of sped up. That through no fault of their own, we've been kind of revised a little bit. So, is there uh, any questions about that? Is there an incentive to moving officially to have an appeal on the way to move now? The only incentive is we would be rating that around the next bond issuance. So um, Moody's is generally kind of the, the one that you can think of when you're going out for a rating. So that's what we, we elected to go to our bond council recommended, but they are uh, they're very upset in fact that they're putting all their uh, their their members through this. So they've had to do this rating call for everybody in Illinois pretty much. Sure, but but what would be holding us back from making that vote? Right? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. The, the, there's just no point right now with timing wise because we're just not going out for any next bond issuance. So if we did do that uh, and go out for an issuance, we would uh, you know kind of contact them to interviews almost and push them which rating we want to go for. And you said there's no um, there's no perspective right now that we would have we would have that need, right? Correct. And it's not like we're trying to sell ourselves to get you know potential investors coming in us right now. So where we're situated, we've already received the referendum bonds or debt certificates. We have nothing in the future, right? Okay, thanks. Yeah. Give you the updates if they, if they arrive in the future. Yeah. Okay, that wraps up our discussion. Um, we have two further financial requests for first votes. Uh, moving on to notice of communication. Usual to give the reminder of our 2020 2021 board of education meeting calendar and then also the diamond ed community water relations incident. Um, does anyone have any questions about those? No. Okay, and then we will move on to public comments and petitions on non agenda items. Do we have any public comment this evening? And again, as usual, um, if you have a comment, please stick that into the chat box. Not looking at any public guides. Um, so moving on to others, does anyone have anything for others this evening? Yeah. Okay, then we will adjourn into executive session for the appointments, employment, accommodation, employment comments for dismissal that are in place in the district, or legal counsel for the district, including the testimony and the meeting slash test employee or legal counsel for the district. Validity for collective negotiating matters between the district and its employees or their representatives, the deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more class of employees, and for the selection of a person to fill a public office, including the vacancy in a public office when the district is in power to appoint under law or for the potential for removal of the occupant of the public office when the district is in power to remove the occupant under law. May I have a motion to approve? So moved. Mr. Lozada? Yes. Mr. Candela? Yes. Mr. Armenta? Mr. Dale?